for this morning, I am going to share with you on positive psychology and creativity. Uh, actually, in my talk, I would like to focus on three areas. The first is to clarify what is brain power. Secondly, I would like to talk on the how to elucidate the concept of creativity and third, to establish the relationship between the positive psychology and creativity. You know, last year in my trip in Sweden, I happened to find an interesting advertisement in a booklet provided at my hotel in Sweden. The advertisement placed by the Orson region in Sweden called for a high-tech firms it's a simple one-page advertisement with a photograph of a smiling biochemist together with the following two sentences. Very interesting. The first in the advertisement contain the bad news. The brain is the only natural source in the Orson region. The good news, the brain is the only natural source that expands its use. Very interesting. So this is very much in contrast with the traditional regional advertisements which tend to emphasize the usual economic features such as low wages, low taxes, better transportation, better accessibility, but it focuses on the single most important resource for creativity that is the human brain. The human brain as you know, is a three pound mass of the interwoven nerve cells that controls our activity, is one of the most magnificent and mysterious wonders of creation. This set of human intelligence, interpreter of senses and controller of movement, this incredible organ continues to intrigue scientists and laymen alike. Now this was the foreword by the Senior George Bush, you know, when the decade of the brain was in 1990 So Actually, uh, during this period, in 1993, I was a part of the Indo-US Science Commission and I happened to participate in some of these meetings at that time. As you know, the, the brain, as you see the picture, you know, it's a three pound mass and it is centered not only with the human system, but it contains about more than 100 billion uh, the neurons and more than 3 trillion the other fibers which are attached. Now, this human brain or the cerebral cortex, the frontal lobes are associated with executive functions such as self-control, planning, reasoning and abstract thought. Now, our, our brains are very much product of our environment, both internal and external. Now, for example, as I said, the brain it has so many neurons, but it is also influenced by the, our environment. The frontal lobes and the right hemispheres are most centrally engaged during creative thought and problem solving. Another conclusion from neuroscience supports the idea that creative thoughts comes about by the more complex, dense, neural connectivity between major regions and the brain. You know, in the brain, in the morning, uh, Professor Mandel talked about the brain and also he said how the meditation of the changes, because meditation, what happens is there are a lot of interconnectivity of the neurons. The greater the inter interconnectivity, it will be reflected in the functional LMRI and other things. It is also known that there is a more, more activity during creative insight in the right hemisphere. That when we think, though we have two hemispheres, right and left, but there is more creative activity in the right hemisphere than the left. Technically speaking, such asymmetrical activity is known also as a laterality. The left hemisphere being more involved in analytical problems and the right hemisphere more involved in holistic problems and thoughts. The highly creative brain may be most marked by neural circuits that are more complex and more highly interconnected than the less creative brains. Ideas are generated as much about making connections. You know, the greater the connectivity, 
the greater will be your thing. In this connection, I would also like to mention that like uh, though the environment and other things develop, but the first five years of human growth are more important. Like for example, every one minute, almost one lakh more neurons are established in the child's brain. Now that is the time when the greatest stimulus is need to be given, you know, like uh, Second, uh, knowingly that we know about how genes get turned on off by environmental factors, what we call epigenetics, and how much experience shapes the brain and its connection. So we inherit something which we call genes, but also, you know, even the environment, not only our environment, but like for example, what the grandmother took also influenced the grandchild about the nutrition. So the environment is much Vocal, but the environment which is immediately in our this thing, it makes a lot of difference. And in that context, the role of the schools and the universities play a very important role. Genes in the brain interact with experience and are as much effects as their causes of behavior. Now, creativity has to do with the deep desire to confer permanence to our experience. This was expressed outwardly in the arts and ever since times of cave drivings well over 10,000 years. So the creativity is not a new. You know, it was reflected even the primitive people when they try to reflect this creativity in making the drawings and other things. And of course, there are factors how it evolved. Creativity is defined as novel yet appropriate solution to a problem or response to a situation. You know, that is, there are so many definitions. Creativity can assume two apparently different uh, roles in society. First, one is the improvement role. You know, improvement in every walk of life. And second is the expression role. Focuses on significance of activity for the individual creator. In the end, these two roles interact and are complementary to each other. Creativity, like pleasure, longs for the eternal. You know, it's, it is not a temporary phenomena for all the pleasures crave for eternity. Now here, there is some kind of a confusion because when we try to confuse pleasure and happiness, like last year when I talked, I just said there is a difference between pleasure, happiness and bliss. Bliss is higher, happiness is lower and pleasure is still lower. Any kind of creativity which discovers and establishes new meaning takes place predominantly during short or long empty fragments of time which allow the mind and soul unrestricted free choice. When we are alone, you know that then we are able to think about certain things. Thus, three elements, the freedom, the creativity and meaning becomes triplets. These triplets are born of and reinforce a growing awareness of the unique worth of human beings. Creativity can deal with anticipated crucial problems as well as satisfy the desire for a more meaningful and healthier life. It was manifested during earlier civilizations, in the magnificent temples, in the great myths, in the tales speaking of supernatural worlds, in portraying of gods and music and in the dances. While new tools, tools appear during the same period, there are good indications that some technological inventions may have been derived from the mythological image. Thus, for example, there is the invention of wheels. You know, wheel is a very important part of uh, uh, technology. For carriages originated in the myths pertaining to sun god Phobius, who is portrayed as riding across the sky in his sun chariot, where the wheels are represented by the round sun. And this idea of sun going in the round chariot gave the idea to the man to create uh, the wheel. Uh, today, much fine creativity channel into the development of a more remarkable mechanical products and technological achievements, a space telescope, powerful computers, better nuclear devices, human cloning and life prolonged drugs which are growing at a very exponential rate. However, this kind of creativity that is required for our survival as human beings is one that is enhanced by the individual's ability to pause and get in touch with himself 
or herself, the inner self. Genuine creativity is an indispensable quality of every single human existence. On account of this, every individual harbors deep within himself something that can provide his or her the life with some meaning, the purpose. The human being is first and foremost a creator. Jean Paul Sartre, an odd atheist, similarly stressed that we created ourselves. Indeed, most creativity are creative are those persons who by reaching courageously beyond the horizons of their customary existence. We just don't live in eating in you know just shelter and all those things. These are the routine things, but go beyond that particular thing. The creativity demands willingness and ability to unstructure our habitual ways, sometimes in a limited manner by questioning some specific views, sometimes by questioning some fundamental attitudes and convictions. The first consists in looking briefly beyond the limits of one's everyday world. Said to be creative, we should go beyond our food and shelter, but something more than that. The second involves for a far more radical questioning of the very presuppositions underlying one's vital beliefs in regarding to the basic makeup and meaning of life, of the universe, of the earth and human psyche. Such unstructured of the mind, which the mathematician philosopher Edmund Husserl described as phenomenological reduction, does not imply an automatic categorical, theoretical uh, rejection, but abandonment of all the things that we find fascinating in modern science, of all the things that give us pleasure, of all the th things that we find lovable. Nothing is definitely lost, but new observance, new meanings, new challenges, and unheard of directions for us pursue are allowed to light up and give a new meaning. Creativity is not a privilege of few select individuals. It is inherent in everyone. Nevertheless, it produces new meanings and motivations every person. The ability to be creative and to understand the creation's implications increases the awareness of the kinds of changes that are required inside ourselves and what actions are called for if our existence as human beings on this planet is to thrive and continue. Creativity is individual, that we all know, but it is also social. Human creativity is unique in that it has completely transformed the planet we live. It is not only the individual but a social context, given that the anatomy of the human brain is not so different from that of the great apes, what enables us to be creative? How the spectacular creativity of humans came about is about uh, important questions. You know, the Brunovsky, in one of the men who said we are on the ascent of men, he identified five things. And he said, for example, the discovery of the corn, the use of the thumb, the language, these are, you know, is the quite important area. So human cognition is creative and socially situated. Knowledge accumulates, but knowledge also diffuses and gets applied in new contexts. See, it said it is not a question of accumulation, but unless it is diffuses by communication. So cognition is shaped by the social matrix in which it is embedded. Uh, the human capacity to exchange and build on one's another ideas has completely transformed this planet. Three important factors which have helped in the growth of the creativity in the recent past, first I would say call as enhanced communication at all levels. Communication is a technology. The second important factor which has helped, sharing of our knowledge. See for example earlier, even if somebody had some knowledge, we used to keep to ourselves. And that is how some of our ancient Indian thought could not grow because it went with the person concerned. But in the last two centuries, there has been a shift. And this shift is sharing of the knowledge which has played a big impetus. And third, 
which has occurred recently, the economics of the, the ideology of economics. The economics also plays an important role in the growth of the technology. Today, if you have seen the computer science and other things, and some of the you know the defense and other things, it's the ideology of economics which is pushing this. Uh, Human creativity is distinctive because of the adaptive and open-ended manner in which it changes. Uh, in what sense creativity ideas evolve throughout culture? Why creativity is evolved? See what, play, what role the culture plays in creativity and how the creativity is evolving. The role of creativity is not just biological but also cultural evolution. This is how did humans become so good at the generation of ideas and adapting to new situations? Do creative ideas evolve in the same sense as biological ones through natural selection or by some other means? Thus, by understanding the evolutionary origin of human creativity, we gain perspective on pursuing issues of today and are in a better position to use our creativity to direct the future course of our species and our planet. Human beings have always tackled their problems and the adversities of life by drawing on their resources, the resilience and values. Some of these steps were highlighted by Professor Mandel in the morning. Positive psychology is that part of psychology that takes on the task among others by deciphering the mechanism to meet such challenges. Positive psychology also offers the opportunity to systematize knowledge and give insight concerning the possibilities of overreaching the distance from negativity. You know, I was just trying to link now from the linkage, you know, the positive psychology, how it can help in the development of creativity. Thus, creativity is an attribute of positive psychology. Positive psychology explores how optimism can lead to health, happiness and creativity. Creativity involves the translation of our unique gifts, talents and vision into an external reality that is new and useful. Unless you have a vision, we can't have a vision and we can't fulfill those things. Creativity takes place inside of our own personal but also in social and cultural boundaries. Uh, it is tempting to describe the process of culture change in Darwinian terms in, because the parallels between biology and culture are striking and Darwin's theory had a profound and unifying effect on biology. Through culture, though uh, culture exhibits key Darwinian properties, but having these properties does not imply that mechanisms are similar and they are not indeed the paradox that necessitate the theory in natural selection does not exist with respect to culture. You know, the theory, both the Darwinian and other mechanisms are there. It is said that culture evolves without any sort of self-replicating structure. There is, new there is no theory of cultural evolution that can explain cultural change. It is proposed that worldviews evolve not through the survival of the fittest but through the transformation. They neither not survive intact but transform over generation as elements get incorporated and adapted to new circumstances. Now this is very interesting. It is said that culture uh, investigation in creativity received an impetus in the 50s. While growing with growing demand for research, scientists, engineers, and high-level ex executives, their economics also came into play. Interest shifted from individual who is merely dependable, accurate, and critical thinker to one who also displayed ingenuity, originality, and inventiveness. Creat creativity, long, long regarded as a prime quality of artistic production came to be widely recognized as a basis for scientific achievement and later in economic development in the present globalization. Creativity, the ability to produce new forms, to solve new problems by novel methods. 
So now, for example, the creativity is not the domain of the scientists or the artists, but has gone into the marketing field and other things also. So the idea that creativity is mysterious, uncontrollable, unpredictable is no longer accepted. All phases of creativity process can be subjected to scientific scrutiny and improvement. While opinions may differ on whether creativity can be taught, there is no doubt that it can and should be fostered. And that is very important. So it is not just accidental. Uh, in the past, environment improvement in the work environment focus on either physical aspect at work or managerial rewards such as pay or promotion. You know, we just said if you give more pay, the pay persons will be more creative or some more rewards. But emphasis should also be placed on improving the intra-group communication and development of leadership for, for the creativity development. The, the enterprise of the study of creativity can also be just categorized in terms of process, products, personality, places and persuasion. These five elements. History is the medium in which ideas, events build up and arrive with some significant effects really going away. The significance of historical process lies as much in the timing as in the content. What determines what will be important. It applies to the concepts related to the creativity and the methods used to study it. Secondly, the institutions and identified groups are critical in selection and giving coherence to the important strengths of possibilities from those already in work. Say for example, we have so many universities, we have 120 billion population. What is our product? What is our output? You know, sexually they're not the human beings. You know, we often believe here that Indians are intelligent but they become more intelligent when they go to US or other countries. Now, it is a, there is a meaning that we, the environment plays an important role. The social context plays an important role. Now, these are important things. Third, the relevance of ideas becomes apparent only when there is a group of engaged, articulated persons deeply concerned with the same questions or problems and possibilities. <coughs> the first step in doing any research was to have concept of research in mind to believe that doing research on human nature was important and feasible. The second the history of research on creativity began with the recognition that research constituted an effective a practical way of learning about the understanding of the world around us. The Aristotle and Kant and many others had much to say about creativity even 2000 years earlier. Creativity tends to flourish when there are opportunities for exploration, independent work, and when originally supported and valued. Now this is very important for a university setup. That unless a university there are give you know give the opportunities and facilities, the creativity cannot develop. Uh, knowledge, creativity, and communication all are important through the mutual communication and discussion based on the common knowledge. For example, if you want to develop common knowledge, I just put CIJ as the common knowledge. The two persons endeavor to develop new ideas by combining the differential knowledge. Now the differential knowledge of D, one person, and DJ, another person, when they combine and they communicate, the common knowledge would develop. This joint process of knowledge creation can be expected to be most productive when the proportion of the three components, that is the com common knowledge, the differential knowledge of the person and the differential knowledge of the other person are well balanced. <laughs> A sufficient amount of common knowledge is necessary for effective communication between the two persons. Uh, furthermore, if one person does not have a sufficient amount of differential knowledge, there is little motivation for another person's uh, to meet and collaborate. In other words, too much common knowledge means little heterogeneity or originality in the collaboration uh, and they are unable to yield enough synergy. In general, for a cooperative process of knowledge creation by a group of people to be productive both in sufficient heterogeneity and sufficient common base in the sense of knowledge are essential. 
Now this is very important and the people have developed a formula how this can be evaluated and measured. When such a delicate balance in the states of knowledge exists, an unexpected synergy potentially evolves from their close collaboration. Actually, the observation, this observation is not entirely new. For example, there is an old Chinese saying which roughly is with three ordinary people persons getting together, splendid ideas will come out. But there is a catch, an important catch. After the three ordinary persons meeting for three years, no more or splendid ideas will come. You know, like what it say? See, for example, when they three persons meet, you know, as a part of communication, but these three persons cannot continue to add your knowledge going on. So there is a need to add the newer person. When these two persons have initially sufficient heterogeneity in their states of knowledge, but if they continue close collaboration in knowledge creation, their heterogeneity may keep shrinking in other. This is because the very cooperative process of knowledge creation results in the expansion of their common knowledge. Through both the sharing of newly created ideas and transfer of differential knowledge to each other. See, for example, in like University of Harvard and others, there is a rule. If you are a topper, you are the best student. After such, you graduate, you have to go out for five years. You can't stay. And they bring some new ideas. Because if the same thing is there, the person is knowledge will be shrinking. These are some very important things which have been well established and some of the good universities, how they evolved, we can learn from them. Thus, unless some additional complementary mechanisms are not working, the cooperative process of knowledge creation among the same group of people tends to become less productive and eventually much more less. Now, another thing, location is important. Communication is necessary for knowledge transfer. Of, so the two persons must have some idea in common. But in addition, person I must have some idea that are not already possessed by person J. Uh, that is, location seems to be an essential feature of knowledge, creation and transfer. So regions and migrations are important elements along with urban economic concepts. So this is, you know, how the migration is helping. Uh, in, we can investigate the relationship between the agglomeration, innovations and culture. If everything occurred at the same time, there would be no development. If everything existed in the same place, there could be no particularity. Only space makes possible the particular which then unfolds in time. If space creates and protects us in these limitations, particularly in the price is for existing. Creative people change the way others think. So they must then be persuasive to be recognized as creative. The conceptualization of creativity grew out of discussions and arguments regarding the basic nature of human being when released from institutional doctrine. You know this particular thing when in six, late 70s or 80s more, some of our scientists and agricultural scientists committed suicide or not view and cry in the parliament at the national media. And they thought that uh, our productivity in the agriculture field was shrinking. And if we you know, apply the same formula, so at that time actually in late 80s, the Ministry of Agriculture and the Regional Director General of Indian Council for Agriculture Research requested me to study about the various agriculture institutions. So we did a, a five study for five years, studying 2,000 scientists from all the institutes of ICAR, and we brought out two monographs on quality of work environment and its impact on health and behavior of agriculture scientists. You know, and then this was a quite a difficult to study, but these are... Now, at the time, we also developed uh, what are the creative index of scientists, and we also developed the creative instead index of the institutions. You know, these are, I will not go into those details. But, you know, just I would like to conclude by just two things. I just said what are the concepts and other things, but there are, I would just like to highlight that there are also obstacles to creativity. And at least there are many, but I would like, like to hi highlight two important obstacles. One is the conservatism. You know, the conservatism is when you don't want to accept the new idea. And the second is conformity. 
let us be, you know, now both continue to be conflict with reality. So we have to go out of the conservative and conformity and concluding an interdisciplinary science of creativity has the potential to provide more complete scientific explanation of how new things emerge from human activity. Complex systems could generate creativity and the principles of positive psychology can enhance creativity. Thank you very much for listening.